Where does your animation journey begin when you click the cascader icon on your screen for the first time? Not with you frowning and thinking, what kind of cool animation would I like to make today? Although I agree that this question needs to be given due attention as well. It all starts with you looking at the viewport window, your main work area. And that is our focus for today's video. We will also cover the view menu dedicated to additional viewing options. As you've probably figured out by now, this video, to a large extent, is dedicated to our beginner animators. But don't rush to close this video, my dear seasoned professionals. Advanced users can also find it useful. So, here we open the project, and the first thing you need to master is the skills of navigating the viewport window. Now, for all my next actions, I'm holding out the ALT key and using corresponding mouse buttons. The combination of ALT with the left mouse button performs rotation. And with the right mouse button, you can zoom in and out. And with a scroll wheel pressed, you can move the camera in space normally in one plane. Activating the lock icon in the upper right corner of the viewport blocks all the manipulations I described earlier. Next to the lock, you can find another extremely important tool. This is the called view cube. It tells us in which direction the axes are facing, X, Y, and Z. When you click on it, the view mode switches to orthographic and to perspective, respectively. Our view changes its location, taking the desired angle depending on which axis we click on. Holding down the Ctrl and Alt keys, we can switch between display types, taking into account the nearest plane of certain axes. To move in one direction or another, move the mouse while holding down the left mouse button, and the same combination of Ctrl plus Alt. We can work with several viewports at once. Press SHIFT and SPACE to divide the viewport into two, or SHIFT, ALT and SPACE for four viewports respectively. Now I would like to focus on the upper left part of the viewport window. This is where you can change the editing mode by selecting one of the available ones. Each mode has its own set of elements available for editing. In addition, the sets of settings can be adjusted using the menu called by right-clicking on the Edit Mode icon. The Visible column determines which types of objects are visible. Selectable determines which are available for editing. Next to it is a camera button. The down arrow pointer allows us to add a camera into the scene. Next is a pop-up tab similar to the editing modes. The first function is tracking the previously selected objects with the camera. The second is switching to the display mode from the camera itself. You can also lock these functions. And the third option, pressing the hotkey T, performs centering on a particular active object in the scene. Moving on to the top panel of the main menu, we will need the View tab in which, in the pop-up window, we can learn about the following. The hotkey S activates switching between Viewing mode and Editing mode. The C key changes between the Current mode and Joint mode. Shift plus S switches between point controller and box mode. Shift plus C switches between joint and mesh modes, regardless of which editing mode is currently selected. Next, we go on to functions with which we can load or delete textures from our character. If they're available, of course. You can also do the same from the toolbar by activating the desired item in these settings. Set default field of view. The default value is 30 when pressing Alt plus 0. The V key hides the selected scene object. And Shift plus V hides everything except the selected scene object. Alt plus V returns a display of everything previously hidden in the scene. And the function to turn on and off the silhouette display mode. It is also available on the toolbar. Last but not least, the hotkey Y fixes the display of trajectories for all currently selected objects in the scene. And that's what I wanted to show you today, dear users. Now you know what to pay attention to before you start creating your first animation. I hope you found something very useful for you in this video. And I would be extremely grateful if you could give me the thumbs up. And I'll see you very soon in the new videos.